welcome everybody to this special edition of Trowel Time coming to you from our campus in Alma, Michigan. As always, it's good to have Ben Tigner behind the cameras making sure that we all look good. Well, as good as we can look. Uh, Darren Thompson back in the back uh, doing the production. Nobody applauded for Ben though. So. And uh, our audience in the back, <laughs> Cheryl, it's good to have you with us. Uh, thanks for being here, Cheryl. <clears throat> Always makes the place look better. Yeah. All right. Uh, this special edition of Trowel Time is um, kind of our wrap up from Grand Lodge. And to help us with uh, discussing Grand Lodge and all the stuff that happened at that annual communication is Tom Braun, our uh, Right Worshipful Grand Lecturer. Tom, good to have you with hey, us. Nice to be here today. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. Out. It, it, a little gorgeous. warm, a yeah. little warm, but cool. otherwise, very nice day. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, our esteemed friend, and uh, <laughs> I, get, I get paid extra and, for that. And wisdom encrusted brother, <laughs> Bill Finkel, our grand secretary. Oh, Bill, good to have you with us. Yes, good to be here, Bob. You bet. Yeah. Ninety-one yes. degrees outside. It's hot outside. Yeah. But we've been complaining. I was been complaining about the winter for so long. I'm not going to complain about ninety-one outside. Yeah. It, it feels nice. It's good to have summer with us. I think it's a little early, but uh, it's just been. Uh, we had a great uh, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, full of uh, of remembering those that uh, gave the the uh, the ultimate sacrifice, yeah. but uh, what beautiful weather! My gosh, you just couldn't ask for better. I know there were a lot of parades and and uh, festivities and things, and I hope that they were all, you know, very uh, very solemnly dedicated, to remembering those those men and brothers for us uh, and sisters, of course, uh, who uh, who laid down their lives so that we can do the things that we do. So, but it was a beautiful weekend for that. Yeah. Great Grand Lodge session. Um, yeah. Boy, we have, we've got some great footage. We're going to intersperse it in through the, the program today. we got great footage from the banquet and from the installation of officers and just from a lot of stuff. So, um, Very smooth, the whole session. It was. Very right? smooth. It was great. Yeah. 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 And great feedback from the craft. Everybody, really? Everybody was impressed. That's wonderful. That's good. I, the food was pretty good. You know, hotel food's always kind of iffy, but uh, it was very good. It was, I think it was served nicely. And no chicken. We didn't have, ch I had a piece of chicken somewhere. One piece, one yeah. piece of chicken, yeah. Yeah, yeah I generally avoid, avoid the chicken. Uh, <laughs> they try to hide it under they, the state. They usually do, <laughs> yeah, under uh, asparagus. <laughs> we, we found yeah, it. Yeah, asparagus. Um, <laughs> we, we, uh, we had an election of officers, and, and it was close. Yeah. It really was. All the way through, we had three great candidates for great. office. I look forward to the two that did not um, prevail in the election to come back and, and go again. You guys, it, it was it was great to have that kind of that caliber of man uh, and Mason running for those offices. You could not make a mistake, and uh, but one did prevail, and uh, his name is Craig Lerke, and Craig uh, lives up in St. Ignace and uh, uh, is retired from the U.S. Navy. And uh, looking forward to having him down here on one of our upcoming um, trial times to introduce himself to the fraternity. Yeah. Uh, of course, Larry Judson is our new Grand Master. Larry and his wife, uh, Marianne, live in Gaines, Michigan. Yeah. It's a suburb uh, of Byron. Which is a suburb of Byron. Yes, you have to take the bypass to get into Gaines. Yes. Uh, <laughs> But uh, he belongs to Byron Lodge and uh, and many others. But uh, so we're, well, we're just, looking forward uh, to that. Just to add that Bob, that he's going for a checkup at the Mayo Clinic next week, and we hope that everything is as he has yeah, expected. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, prayers, prayers for everything, absolutely, for good answers, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. So uh, that's good stuff too. Um, Grand Lodge session. We had a few amendments this year. We had three Correct. amendments. Um, amendment number one. Uh, was would have allowed legally <laughs> a Masonic funeral for a brother who had been suspended for non-payment of dues. They couldn't quite get the verbiage in the right, right order though. Um, so it was actually tabled, but uh, Bill, we can't do that, can we? No, no, we can't. So it's just kind of withdrawn. <laughs> and, we uh, can't do that either, but that's better but than we, table. Yeah, we can, you know, uh, but uh, they're going to work on that. It'll be back next year. And they'll yes. bring it back next year for consideration again. Um, amendment number two, do you remember what it was, Bill? The uh, number of meetings in the year. Yeah. They want to reduce it from 10 to 4. How'd that work out? Uh, not good. No. No. Failed. Uh, significantly, we appreciate the the intention. We appreciate the uh, uh, the submission, 
Uh, but that one, the craft felt uh, wasn't wasn't the right thing to do, and so they voted no on that. And then Amendment Number Three uh, was the coming to the Grand Lodge for cost of alterations to a lodge yeah. building. Mm -hmm. So if you were, yeah, it was kind of um, yeah. written that the lodge would come if they were going to remodel the building or something. But really, it's not a lodge thing; it's a Masonic Temple Association thing. So in any case, that one uh, did pass and. Uh, so now if your lodge is considering those things, they don't need to bring uh, renovation or remodeling um, costs and stuff to the Grand Lodge. So that's a good thing. It kind of puts the power back into the lodge where it should be. But really it's an MTA issue anyway. It's Masonic Temple Association issue anyway. So I don't think that there's going to be a lot of fallback from that. Um, golf outing. We won. We won. Absolutely. Uh, we had a great team. Uh, although we did have to carry the Grandmaster around uh, at the time, that was Leonard. So, uh, and he gets heavy. That guy. he does. He's a big hitter, though. Yeah. <laughs> ah, big hitter, llama. Yeah, we had a, we had a blast. Though. Yeah, it was a nice right. course. Yep. Good day. That's the first one we've played where it wasn't either snowing or raining. Yeah. 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 It, it was, was a beautiful, beautiful day. course. Great day. Polecat up in uh, Mount Pleasant. So shout out to Polecat. Did a great job. We had a good time. It was a lot of fun. And, uh, and of course, uh, our team won, uh, as it rightfully should. So there's nothing more to that. <laughs> who who uh, won again? He, we did. <laughs> and quiet back there in the quiet back there in the in the peanut gallery <laughs> yeah. here. Uh, you, you yes. Mean there's some doubt. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of one of Michigan's great fraternal friends uh, jurisdictions is the Grand Lodge of Canada in the province of Ontario. Yes. Uh, it, it really is a very special relationship that we have with them. Their Grand Secretary uh, is past Grand Master Gary Dowling, yep. and uh, Gary was, uh, we, we resolved and uh, awarded him honorary past uh, Grand Master uh, status in the Grand Lodge of Michigan. So hopefully we'll be seeing Gary, hi Gary, uh, for many years to come. Uh, we're looking forward to that. Just a, a great friend of Michigan Masonry. I'll be seeing him in a month or so, six weeks. I'm You're going, going up? I'm going up to the All right. Grand Lodge of Canada in the province of Ontario, yeah, in North Toronto. Brush up now, because you're going to have to say A a lot and a. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, great, great jurisdiction. We love Ontario. We love our brothers from up there. We had great turnout with the uh, distinguished guests from other jurisdictions. Um, something that doesn't happen a lot in Michigan is because our, our grand uh, annual communications are so close to each other is Indiana was able to be with us. Yeah. So we're very grateful for that. Grand Master of four days or something he'd only been installed the previous yeah. week so yeah yeah, yeah very short time yeah, good, uh, yeah. but uh, glad to have them with us illinois was with us ohio of course was with new, us new york uh new york was with us uh ohio he's actually a fan of michigan football but i guess we're supposed to be shut up about that so well oh i just didn't uh, there could be an impeachment he's a very proud ohio. proud supporter of michigan well football. he should yeah. but yeah. it's uh, certainly contrary to most uh uh, Ohioans yeah. and I, 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 I talked to him after the session and uh, he said uh, he didn't know what to expect with the breakout sessions but now that he went he likes them and and they're considering doing something similar in Ohio so yeah. imagine that Ohio <laughs> copying something that Michigan not our ideas are available for all to use. Yeah. yeah, the the breakouts were great. Yeah, they were. I got a lot of really good comments about the breakouts. Ben and Darren did one on uh, social media and and that kind of thing, right? OLP or our lodge. Secretary, secretary, secretary duties, and social media strategies. Secretary's duties, yes. Um, did yeah, you first arm one them was all? Standing room only. We probably had twenty guys standing. You did. Them. I left. Yeah. Yeah, it was hot in there. It was very hot. Yeah, so I left. But uh, it was a great, great turnout. Good stuff. Yeah, I went to the second one. So you went to the second one. Was that standing room too? No, it was seats oh, it was thinned out. Yeah, eighty <laughs> percent. They heard I was coming. Yeah, <laughs> well, they're in the bar. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, Darren kept saying, "We'll refer you to the Grand Secretary." He said that five times while I was there. Yeah, don't, that's why we don't go to that stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, went yeah. to the Lodge Success Team breakouts. Those were up on that second level and uh mm -hmm. and it was literally standing room only so i stayed in there for about a half hour but then good uh, great conversation back and forth so good job to fred and corey on that uh the foundation had a great breakout and uh, as did the home yeah. uh, so all in all it was just a great day yeah 
that was Monday. Uh, Tuesday was the session. Um, let's take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk about some stuff that you two are up to, and uh, we'll be back right after this. As I reread the Masonic obligations and the history of Masonry, uh, what's happening here is certainly in line with those teachings. Uh, it makes us very proud to be uh, a part of the Masonic family at this time. When I was Grand Master many years ago, my wife said, if we live long enough, we're going to be, we're going to go to the Michigan Masonic home. There's a lot of competition out there. And this is a, this is a, it's a business, let's face it. And a lot of businesses out there want our money. And so the Masons are very, very prominent people. They donate a lot of money to a lot of things. And so it's important to me to continue this up. This place is, didn't just happen. A lot, of, a lot of Masons and Eastern Star people through the years have found ways to support the, this, this facility. And it is absolutely necessary that they continue to do this. Uh, I just don't know where some of these people would be. You know, I've talked to quite a few people that have moved here from other places, that they, other homes that they lived in. And they all praise this place. I can't think of any place else I'd rather be. And welcome back. So we're going to talk now. Bill, what's going on in the Grand Secretary's world? June is, of course, the month for? It's for the, uh, the secretaries to read the list of names of brothers who have not yet paid their dues. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a sad time. It is. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, and I get one or two secretaries will say, well, we only have two. <laughs> Well, if every lodge only has two, that's 504 masons that we're looking at suspending. Yeah. We've yeah. got to look at the big picture, not just the local lodge, and yeah. think what we can do to help the whole fraternity. Yeah. So Absolutely. It adds up in a hurry. Um, so the, the list is read. It's referred to a committee of some type. Some lodges are pretty small. Some are a little bit, yeah. a little mm -hmm. bit bigger. But what should that what should that group of guys do? This, well, then they should try uh, contact everyone on the list and, yeah. and make sure. That, that they're aware that they've been suspended, first of all. Most of them don't, by the right, way, we know. Right. Uh, see what they can do to help, find if there if there are any kind of financial difficulty, if the lodge can help them in any way. Uh, you know, we, we go to our expense and time and trouble bringing them into masonry, mm -hmm. and it's, it just seems wrong to me that we can throw them out just by s signing a yeah. name. Yeah. You know, we should put the same effort trying to keep them in as what we did initially. Yeah. Know? Yeah, it's been an ongoing thing um, yeah. for all of us. And I suppose we look at it a little bit different than a lodge does because we <clears throat> really are kind of the, yeah. we work for all of the lodges. So, you know, we all we have, uh, you know, Grand Master is not Grand Master of a lodge. He's mm -hmm. Grand Master of the lodge, you know, yeah. of all of them. So 258 lodges and Bill is, is Grand Secretary is, is 250 eight lodges under his, his charge. We can't do what a lodge can do and should be doing. And that is reaching out, building relationships with your membership. That's why they joined, and that's what we need to do. If we don't do that, then that's why they, I think, that's why they leave. Mm -hmm. Some cases, you know, there's just life happens and things things occur. People move, and and uh, and life happens, and sometimes it just happens. But I think for for the most part, um, we should do a lot better job of that. Well, you know, and I've been encouraging or recommending that they start this process earlier. They should mm -hmm. start in, in January. The Blue Book says dues have to be paid on or before January 1st. Mm -hmm. So why not start January 2nd looking for people like yeah. that? that? That's where I yeah. would do Or December 15th. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. really. Yeah. We leave it way too late and that becomes a, a big burden when, so, yeah. And if you need help, yeah. once again, call. call. Yeah. Yeah. Ask for help. It's it's not a it's not a shame. Um, very good. Uh, we're going to come back to your trivia. It again. It has to be vetted. Uh, so after the unfortunate <laughs> eunuch incident, as it's come to be known, uh, but uh, we'll come back to that time. 
Tom, right. you got a new crop of DDIs, some new, some older ones, but uh, newer ones. And uh, uh, so what are you charging them with over the summer months then or as they get started back in September when they come back to the lodges? Well, we, first of all, we had a great session, well uh, attended, uh, the, in the, and it worked out well to be in the afternoon. I kind of like that. Yeah. Uh, we had a lot of BGPs in attendance and a lot of masters and master masons uh, Excellent. In, in attendance. Excellent. Uh, the we went over the requirements for DDI certification for the new uh, DDIs, uh, and uh, they're already eagerly working on being certified. So we've already got two certified of the brand new ones. That's great. Uh, I ask them to do three things when they go to lodge. I ask them to teach, encourage, and inspire. I don't want them to do the work. Right. That the, the best situation, it's a win-win, is when a DDI or a regional or a Grand Lodge officer can go to a lodge and not have to do anything mm -hmm. because people are taking up the ritual and, uh, and doing their part. You bet. And that's what's exciting about it, and that's what keeps that fire going. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Good stuff. There is a lot of really good ritual. You know, I had the opportunity to go to a couple lodges last couple weeks ago before Grand Lodge. And I was just blown away. Um, Luby Windsor up in Reed City, great job. Uh, ritual, they uh, initiated that night the Worship Master's son. They're going to have him raised if he hasn't already because um, he's being deployed overseas. So oh, okay. that, was, that was fun. I, I didn't know that that was going on. Great night, though, uh, for, for that young man as well as for his uh, father. So. Um, and the, uh, the other thing that we're going to concentrate on, and including the Grand Lodge officers when they visit lodges, are to uh, remind the lodges of their huge responsibility they have in building masons for tomorrow. You know, they have to build their lines. They have yeah. to encourage those new members to take those officer positions. And out of those officers' positions will come their, grand, their worshipful masters. And out of that pool of worshipful masters, will draw for DDIs and BGPs. And hopefully from that group will be the Grand Lodge officers later on down the line. Mm -hmm. So it all comes down to that. And so we're gonna hear a lot about building Masons for tomorrow. Yeah, a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Um, and degree work does not stop in the summer, folks. It does so not. Go, go to uh, Darren's, uh, um, I, say, I say Darren's calendar, it's, it's the calendar on our website, go there. Uh, Darren kind of manages the thing, but go there and find. There's a ton of stuff that's happening. I'm telling you, check your weekly e news, picnics, and just a lot of stuff going on. So it's a very going to be a very active, busy summer. It's going to be good stuff. So exciting. Thank you, Tom, for everything you do you, for you us. You know where I like to say, Tom, a, a new Mason trying to do stuff, absolutely trying to do anything. I, and yeah, it just absolutely. it just excites me that the that they want to get into it. And I, I love that. I love, you know, and with the right encouragement. They'll do it, yeah. you know. Yeah. They're taking that first yeah. upright, regular yeah. step on yeah. their own. Yeah. Very good. And we're there to support that. them. Love to see that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right, we're going to take a quick break. You're going to learn about some things we have for sale and how to get them. So we'll be right oh. back. Are you looking for the latest Masonic apparel, materials, and literature from the craft? Look no more. At michiganmasonicstore.com, you can find everything from hats and shirts to tumblers, blankets, and books. Our shirts come in a range of sizes and with logos and branding custom stitched for the Michigan Masons. Don't wait. Visit michiganmasonicstore.com now. And welcome back. So uh, we had a few awards at Grand Lodge session, yeah. as we always do. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to kind of make note of those. Um, Distinguished Service Award, that's something the Grand Lodge Board of Directors grants to a worthy uh, Master Mason. Um, and this year went to Travis Freeman. Yeah, good man. Uh, Travis is up in News Newberry, and yeah. uh, and a good, good man, and uh, very very grateful for Travis. He does a lot of stuff for all of us. Very active in the Shrine in the UP. Very active in Scottish Scott Rite in the UP, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and just a good member of McMillan Lodge, right. uh, number four hundred, I believe. Yep, it is in uh, in Newberry. So congratulations, Travis. A very well deserved honor. Uh, we had two uh, Luby Windsor Award recipients, uh, Bob Lindsay down in Grand Ledge, I've known Bob for a long time, and Paul, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but we'll say Uzlan, uh, U-S-L-A-N, 
uh, from Ann Arbor fraternity, and congratulations to both of those. Paul will be getting his uh, privately. He wasn't able to be with us at Grand Lodge session. Uh, the Byron Chapel Award, which wasn't presented because Jim couldn't be there, was given this year to Jim Miller. Jim Miller, yeah. Uh, who's a good friend, an old, yeah. uh, uh, old uh, acquaintance of mine for many years, so uh, down in southeast Michigan. And the Mason of the Year went to uh, William Hurley. Yeah. And Bill is also a very uh, deserving uh, brother uh, for that honor. Um, let's go to our mailbag. Uh, Darren. Let us have it. All right, we've got a few this month. The first question we have is, do traditional observance lodges uh, exist in Michigan? What are they? And if they do not exist, can they exist in Michigan? That comes from Scott Kuzma of Zion Lodge Number 1. Not to the best of my knowledge, <laughs> no, there isn't are, right. are any ex in existence in our jurisdiction today. Well, and by the same token, I guess okay. that there's a lot of confusion, even on, on my part, about, about this whole topic. As far as I'm concerned, if you're a Michigan Lodge, chartered by the Grand Lodge of Michigan, which is chartered by the Grand Lodge of New York, which mm -hmm. is chartered by the Grand Lodge of England, you are a traditional observance lodge. So that may fly in the face of some folks who, who think that that is something completely different. Uh, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, every lodge that practices Michigan masonry is a traditional observance lodge. So uh, there may be there. That's a good topic for a future uh, future yeah. program. We might we might carry, uh, but that would be my answer to it. Okay. Okay. This one has come up several times. I can't say it's from any one brother. It's come to me from uh, people who've been inquiring about membership. We've had brothers ask. We've had DDIs ask. Can an agnostic become a mason? In our grand jurisdiction, you can reference the ancient landmarks of masonry. And number two states that a belief in the grand architect of the universe and his revealed will shall be an essential qualification for membership. So if you do not have a belief in deity or not sure what a deity is, you cannot join our fraternity. By definition, an agnostic definition. is a person who believes that nothing is known or can be known of the existence of God. Mm -hmm. Whereas an atheist says there is no God, but an agnostic says He's not sure. nothing can be known, right? Mm -hmm. So, if they're unable to profess that belief... Yeah, in whom do you put your trust? Right. right. Yeah. Okay. I'll go along with that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And... We saw Royce Myers in Mount Pleasant, and he's got two for us this month. So okay. I don't know if that wow. means he's going to take July off to cover July. <laughs> I but don't we'll know. See. Royce rode his bike. Yes. All the way to Grand Lodge from South Haven. Uh -huh. Wow. He rode his bike. Yeah, and that's his concerning bicycle. to me. Yeah, his bicycle. Yes, bicycle. Yeah, not not motorcycle. Bicycle. He, he rode all the way. It took him three days. He had it in the hotel. I don't doubt that. Oh, he did? I, he it sleeps in, with it. It was in the hotel. He's very fond of it. <laughs> okay. Okay, one of Brother Royce's two questions is, what is the process for proposing legislation to be considered an annual communication? The first step would be that, you know, why? Is it, is it absolutely necessary that, 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 there's, that something has to be changed or added? Is it really necessary? Talk to somebody like a BGP with some kind of legal knowledge, then go over it with them. Submit this to this office at least 120 days before Grand Lodge. It would then go to jurisprudence and then come back and be talked about and back on the on the docket, if you mm -hmm. will, at Grand Lodge. Yeah, it has to be in the advance notices and it has to be um, in order or not by jurisprudence, they also are charged with, if they can, something that is not in order to be put into order. Yeah. So there, it takes time to do that, and that's why there has to be this, this 120 days prior to, but just think in January sometime, if you want legislation. There is, in the, in the BGP website, and if you're not there and you're not a BGP, you can't get there, uh, just send us a note. We do have uh, the format for legislation, if you want it. Uh, I always prefer, though, that we figure some way out other than changing really? Masonic law. It's, yeah. it's very costly to do so. 
And really, most of the time when we think that this will solve uh, the problems or whatever they may be, yeah. it really does we'll just create some new there's ones. There's unintended so. consequences. Exactly. And, and another thing is to remember it affects the whole state. Whatever they do, right. it affects everybody, not right. just their lodge. Which exactly. Uh, so anyway, uh, make sure that it's that you vet it personally. Uh, but again, if you can't get that um, the format, it does have to be in a specific format. So you have to get that. And if you can't have access to that, just let us know. We'll be happy to shoot you a copy of it. Okay. okay. In a nutshell, it kind of the format has to be: here's what it says, here's what we want it to say, and here's why. Correct. We want to change it. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. But we're, we have more specific instructions. Exactly. That, so. <laughs> yep. Okay, final question. Do Grand Lodge officers receive the same greeting in lodges when visiting as the Grand Master receives? And does that also apply to DDIs and BGPs and RGLs? The Grand Master uh, coming into lodge is the only one that's allowed to have uh, Grand Honors. Uh, unless his representative is carrying his proxy then you would give him grand honors also. But everybody else, just a normal introduction, they get invited to the east uh, if there's enough room, but that's as far as it goes. They're the only, the Grand Master and his proxy are the only ones that get uh, grand honors. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, All right, I could probably much. mention, reference, somebody will ask about installation. Yes. You give grand honors at installations, yes. but you are acting as, as, the, the, grand as the Grand Master yes. when you're doing the installs. You so. are the installing Grand Master. Yes, yeah, that would right. be yeah. the only other exception. Yeah. Yeah, just to show how much times have changed, I went back, um, you know, every, so in, 19, in 2023, all of the proceedings reflect 2022, okay? Correct. Uh, things that have happened, and we report on that. Well, I went back to 1923. From 1922, and there were that year constituted new lodges. Twelve, twelve new lodges were constituted that year. Um, so they all have January 1st dates because that's when Grand Lodge met then. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. all they yeah. were all constituted throughout the year. But yeah. yes, that's that's basically. And if you go back into that yeah. into those proceedings, you'll see who was there, who did the dedications. You generally didn't have the Grand Master at every one of those. Mm -hmm. It was very rare just because of the distances and times and things. So um, out of all of them, um, there was Fidelity Lodge, that's still with us. Right. Craftsman Lodge is consolidated out. Army and Navy Lodge is gone. Uh, Welfare Lodge is still with us. Roosevelt Lodge is gone. Yeah. Uh, Metropolitan Lodge is gone. River Rouge Lodge uh, gone. is gone. Uh, Westgate Roosevelt. Lodge Roosevelt is here. actually a couple of yeah, Roosevelt's still yeah. going. Not Roosevelt. Is it Roosevelt? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. In Pontiac. It's in Pontiac. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Disregard. Well, you, uh, you'd be getting nasty. I'm going to get a letter from you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're trying, Boy. To, we're trying uh, to save you here. Westgate is now a consolidated lodge. <laughs> it, it, uh, it's still there. Birch Run is still there. Atlanta 516 yeah. is mm -hmm. still there. Hale Lodge is still with us. And Ewan. Is with us, but it's under a different name. I think okay. is it you and Lake Superior Lodge now? I think they're part of Lake Superior now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, nine buildings were dedicated, including Kalamazoo. And I might add, uh, Kalamazoo uh, Temple is where they held Grand Lodge that year, and there were 800 people at that. They held it in the auditorium of the Kalamazoo Masonic Temple. So that must have been a heck of a building. Wow! Wow! Yeah. They had 800 people at that session, which is a lot when you consider back at that time the difficulties in, in moving around it's not like it is today and they laid 10 cornerstones of everything from public libraries to schools and churches a couple of um, uh, evangelical Methodist churches were had their cornerstones uh, laid uh, by the Grand Lodge that year it was just kind of exciting to to read that back and there were 135,000 Masons in 1923 today there's about 20,000 okay. and how many lodges Bob at that time yeah. over 500 lodges oh. yeah yeah, and the, and as they go through now, 1923, 24, 20, those those years they pick up. There's even more lodges that are constituted during that period of time. Yeah. So it's a very very big time to be a mason in this uh, jurisdiction. Um, I want to note we're going to start a program called Hiram's Closet. So uh, we used to do this, folks. But if if your lodge has stuff that it doesn't need and it doesn't want to throw out or just dispose of, 
send us a note tell us what it is might be dishware uh, a lot of that stuff there's a lot of lodges looking for dishware uh, chairs tables for your cafeteria uh, we've got some lodges that are consolidating out and we've got some furniture uh, including officers chairs that are beautiful we've got all kinds of stuff that we don't we don't I don't want that stuff to go into uh, an antique store so send Darren a note send me a note whatever I don't care how you get that notice to us and we'll announce it on trial time and we'll start to get some dialogue going yeah. if you need something shoot me a note give us a call and uh, we'll start looking around but I've got some lodges that are closing up and we've got some yeah. some furniture and uh, got some beautiful dishware uh, down in Lansing uh, a lot of really nice Masonic dishware. So let us know, uh, and uh, and we'll we'll hook you up with the powers that be that have those those kinds of uh, materials. All right. Okay. Um, back to Darren. Upcoming events. Da, 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 da. All right. The number one upcoming event we have is coming up soon, Saturday, June 17th, is the Grandmaster's Reception at Owasso Lodge 81. Dinner will be at 5 p.m. There is no cost to attend, but you do need to RSVP. Uh, they will be accepting donations on behalf of the Michigan Masonic Charitable Foundation. Um, RSVP info is on the flyer on your screen, and it's on the Grand Lodge calendar in um, the weekly e-news, or get a hold of me, and we can get you that information. So June 17th, Grandmaster's Reception. Saturday, June 24th, there is a table lodge in Madison Heights, hosted by Northwood Ancient Craft. Uh, in addition to dinner, there will be a presentation on Freemasons in the American Revolution period. That flyer is also on your screen, in the news, on our calendar. And then that same day, June 24th, will be the Feast of St. John the Baptist at Battle Creek Masonic Center. Again, that flyer is on your screen. They're going to have a tour of the building at 4 p.m., presentations at 6, and dinner at 7.30. So, if you want to download that flyer it's on the calendar it's in the weekly e-news and or just give us a call and it's not too soon to think about next year's annual communication number 198 it will be a week earlier it is may 13th and 14th so get that on your calendar now all got right thank you events. darren yeah. 198 next year so 200 oh, is creeping up creeping on us up. pretty fast yep we're gonna have to have a bash there we are okay we well, gotta have a party who would be grandmaster then and so next year it'll be eugene if Everything being equal now. I don't want to jinx anything. Right. Uh, so, monkey dust. Uh, so, 98 will be Eugene. He'll be going in. 99 will be, yeah, yeah. going in. Yeah. yeah. So, he's coming out. Uh, so, two, two, our 200 so will be Eugene's grand lodge. So, Larry is, Larry Judson is the 198. Yeah. Eugene is 199. So, Bill Saugert. Bill Saugert will be 200. Right. Okay. An attorney at, at the Bicentennial. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. That'll be fun. Yeah. We're going to have to have a party. Yeah. So uh, look forward to that. Thank you, everybody. Next time on Trial Time, we're going to be talking with uh, Larry Judson, our Grand Master, Leonard Davis, our immediate past Grand Master, just, just to get his you know, kind of thoughts about as the year uh, unwound and, and, uh, and how he now finds us his time being spent, mm -hmm. uh, but we'll talk with Larry and what he wants uh, to see for the future of Freemasonry in Michigan. He's an exciting uh, guy, and we'll also be talking somewhere down the path with Craig Lerke, our new Grand Marshal, and you'll get to know him. Stay tuned, so stay with us for travel time. Go to Lodge, go to a picnic, have a good time, uh, and you enjoy yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, what am I going to do? Yeah, this oh, trivia. Trivia. It, it has been vetted and it's safe, so yes. Well, please. It's, it's not I'm sorry, really. I almost forgot yeah, about really. the trivia. It's uh, it's not really trivia, but uh, the ritual of masonry was written in Old English, and most of us strive to recite it perfectly, even if it doesn't make any sense. In the final craft working tools, the words are to that undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns. But what and where is a born? Well, born is the old English word for boundary. So now it makes sense. Yes. Now, incidentally, the following was taken from Shakespeare's Hamlet. But the dread thou of something after death, the undiscovered country 
from no who's born no travel returns yeah that's written by william shakespeare so. we get a lot of good stuff from old english yeah. <laughs> would you be con I, no <laughs> <laughs> and with that uh, yeah we'll and close with that, <laughs> we'll see you folks see you next time travel time wow. bye bye wow wow what a day up yeah <laughs>